crowd. Hello. I talked to my dad a couple of weeks ago, and he asked me if I would be in charge of pulling the plug when he's on his deathbed. And I said, Pop, I really don't want to have this conversation. And he said, well, you know, I would ask your brothers, but they're all mad at me about stuff, and they'd be plugging me in and unplugging me and plugging me in and unplugging me. <laughs> they're hilarious. And then he told me that he was going to get my brother Russ to do it, and my brother Russ is the golden child, so then I kind of wanted to do it, because he gets to do everything. <laughs> and then I remembered that my brother, that my father, doesn't have insurance. They're not going to plug him in. <laughs> He's going to be on the gurney outside the ER, and they're just going to go, yeah, let's just call it. <laughs> My parents are hilarious. Everything is funny to them. Everything is, they're funny people. They're very funny people. They were mean with the funny when we were children, sure. I will give them this. I was a mouthy child. When I was a kid, my mother, when she had enough of it, she'd say, come here, sit on my lap, let's look up orphanages. <laughs> sure, funny now. And you know, I tell that joke and my mom says, you know they weren't listed. <laughs> and my parents are also crazy. My parents are divorced, but they still live together. Oh my God, they're nuts. They're like a purse full of ants, the two of them. They're crazy. My mom lives in their old room, and then my dad lives across the hall in my old room. And they go bananas when either one of them dates. But they get to date because they're divorced. <laughs> and they got divorced because my dad was doing a little dating. <laughs> yeah. We found out that my father has been having an affair for nine years. And you know what my dad has to say about it? Not nine years in a row. <laughs> That's funny. You're still a dick. <laughs> it's, they're very funny people. But he called me up to tell me that my mom was uh, dating some guy that he went to high school with, and he was freaking out. And I'm like, Dad, you guys live in a town the size of a postage stamp. Okay? You, I mean, you guys live like an acre from where you were conceived. And he said, well, don't talk dirty to me. The first time that my father even acknowledged that I was a girl was when I was 15. He comes up to me in the kitchen and he says, all right, we're going to have the talk. The bee goes from flower to flower. The flower does not go from bee to bee. <laughs> Guess which one you are. <laughs> that was it. That was the extent of his. My dad sells aluminum siding, and the sale is the most important thing in his life. If you don't need aluminum siding, and he's convinced you to purchase aluminum siding, he wins. Yes, the triumph of my father's aluminum siding career is that there is a brick house in South Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that has aluminum siding on it. <laughs> house made out of brick. How did he make that sale? You don't have to ask him twice. He'll tell you. You should have heard the pitch. I just kept telling this guy, low maintenance, low maintenance. Brickle chip. <laughs> and I'm like, Dad, was that fair? Without missing a beat. He's like, what am I, Santa? Am I Gandhi? Am I some kind of social worker? And it used to drive him nuts when we sold stuff for school because we weren't making any money. And he would never help us sell either. He would always say, it's your sale. You close the deal. <laughs> I'm seven. <laughs> you got to work the bars, be back by five. OK, so I'm seven the first time I'm out selling stuff for Little League. And I'm working the neighborhood. I come home. He's on the couch freaking out. How did they go? How did they go? How many candy bars did you sell? Was everybody home? Were there any not homes? You can go to the not homes tomorrow. No. I, I, I went to all the houses in the neighborhood, Dad, except for the houses that said no soliciting, because the coach said you're not supposed to go there because those people don't want you. He freaked. You didn't go to the no sol Tomorrow, you go to the no sol Do you know why those people got those signs up? They'll buy anything. <laughs> they didn't even want those signs.
I was 10 years old and my sister and I were selling candles for church. You know the tall crystallized ones with the pictures of Jesus and Santa shaking hands, right? Okay. <laughs> so there's candle boxes stacked all around the house and my dad has had it. He's like, are you two making any money on this? And we're like, no, we're selling them for church, Dad. And he said, yeah, and now you're going to learn something. Chilling words. He says, how much are you selling them for? We say three fifty dollars each. He says, now you two are going to sell them for 5 And that's how we learned how to skim off the top. <laughs> Shucks. He's a, he's a good guy. He's got a lot of advice about the showbiz, as you can well imagine. Because I don't know if you know this, but uh, showbiz is just like sales. Just like it, sure. And uh, he likes to say things, you gotta make your opportunities, you gotta take your opportunities. Remember what Jesus said, you give a man a fish, that man knows where to go for fish. <laughs> you teach a man to fish and you've just destroyed your market base. <laughs> That's hilarious. They're funny people. I don't know what to tell you. It's, you know what the, um, the funniest thing is, see, they're very, very, they're genuinely fun. My mother, I always wanted the dog. I've always wanted the dog. My parents hate animals. My father hates animals so much he hates vegetarians because they're not pulling their weight. <laughs> so, but I wanted the dog so bad that by the time I was nine, I wanted to be blind so that I could have a dog. I genuinely wanted to be blind, and my parents burst out laughing when I told them this and said, well, we still wouldn't get you, dog. We'd get you stick. You could name the stick, because they're hilarious. Thanks a lot, you guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. So you and Matt broke up. That's hard. That's tough. Sweetie, what do you want to send to Matt tonight? <laughs> we'll play that for you. That's Penny Lover by Lionel Richie. Sometimes when I watch porn, I put my hoodie on so I feel creepier. <laughs> <laughs>